Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio where you join me on Norvis because I spotted a rather unfortunate um, thing happening a moment ago. Let's see if it happens again because I've reloaded. This is the glass receiving area where um, lots of glass is sent over that's been, that's been created from sand on all the exoplanets. And we've got rather a lot of it at the moment as you can see by the way all of this is full and stopped. And this chest is filling up quite quickly. So I'm a little bit concerned that these um, that these these delivery cannon capsules are just going to keep dropping in. So I'm going to watch it for a moment and uh, and see what happens. Yeah. So at this point, as you can see, we've got 32 stacks worth of, of glass in here. So it's getting it's getting a bit full. And the way this is supposed to work is that we subtract thousand from the amount in there, and there's 6.6 thousand in there at the moment. So this should be sending out a positive number, which means the delivery cannon should stop firing. But unfortunately, the way delivery cannons work, or the way we are work working our delivery cannons, is that we're loading several, um, each time the number goes negative, we load in enough um, delivery cannon capsules to fill it up to fill it up completely, and so then it will keep firing. So if you've got a lot of different planets firing at the same delivery cannon chest, then you can potentially end up having a bad time, because if each one of those gets... This thing can take 40, 40 cannon capsules in, but if each gun is loaded with five of them, and there's say uh, eight and if there's if there's eight guns out there and we're, we're starting to, we're trying to keep it above a thousand then you can run into a position where the guns fire too many times and that happens and they may still be firing yes like that so this is this is problematic we're going to need to take a look into this in the next stream there are a couple of ways we can fix this um, <laughs> or we can just leave it coming in because apparently we have more glass and we know what to do with anyway. Actually, there's several ways we can fix it. One would be to put in an additional storage system container over here, uh, probably a warehouse actually, given the sheer quantity we're getting, and then have that dump into there and then out onto this belt as well to get rid of, to to, uh, to get rid of it. Um, and this will this will give us a bit of extra a bit of extra storage space and therefore potentially allow the the system to run have have all of the glass pour out and just go into another box to keep it to keep it safe. The other and probably better way to, to fix this would be to go out to the planets that are actually causing the problem, like I, I, I imagine Agnair is probably one of them because it fires a lot of sand, a lot of glass out. So you can see here we've got we've got guns along here that are firing at us firing at Norvis orbit. We've got guns along here that are firing at Norvis, and each time and they are being loaded by a uh, they're being loaded by a steady stream of glass up here, and then they're being given um, they're being given delivery carrying capsules by this inserter but only being given delivery cannon capsules by the inserter when the signal coming in is, is less than zero. So at the moment we've got a, which one is it, it's this, this pylon over here, we've got a signal of 7,000 glass coming in, so we're not going to, so the inserter isn't going to be running because that's positive. However, when it does go negative, we end up putting in several delivery cannon capsules at once, and so they're all in there and it will work through them. So probably the better way to fix it would be to go around all of the planets that are doing this, and then configure this belt to only run when there's a uh, when that when you get a negative signal. Now that's not quite the, the disadvantage of that is is that it means you don't end up with a stockpile of glass inside the uh, inside the cannon. Um, so when when it's ready to fire, you then have to load the cannon up before it can fire. But on the positive side, you don't get all of this destruction going on. So now we can start talking about the things I actually wanted to talk about with the, in, in this video. As you can see over here, and this is this is the stations on the bus. Tristan's continued with the with operation convert all the stations to to working with a single warehouse in in, in case that saves a little bit of UPS. So he's done these three. That's uh, I think that's steel ingots, copper plates, and uh, and coal. Those are done. But over here we've got glass and silicon and many many other things. And the problem is, that, oh, and this this one's been done. The problem is, in order he's put in these extra additional warehouses all the way along here, and I think he's turned the stations off. So what he's doing here is he's turning off all of the stations so that they will stop requesting additional supplies until they drop down below in, an amount that will fit in one warehouse. If you look at this, you can see this. This one's actually this one has actually got there. This this, this one is now down to um, 11 plus 15 to 10 and 14. So there's less than 100 stacks worth here. So these could now all be dumped into this warehouse. And I thought this alarm down here was supposed to alert Tristan to the fact that that was ready. Um, Oh no! It's only doing it when he gets all the way down to zero to tell him to tell him. Then it's then it's time to do it. But at this point, actually, it would be better to, to put in a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, shenaniganry around here to, to program it up to uh, to just do l like uh, like this. Oh, not like that. Not like that. Like that. Um, in order to in order to get the all all of the resources passed through into this warehouse. 
um, and do something similar with this one down here. I'm not sure how he'd spaghetti it through, but I'm sure it could be done. Because that would allow him to pull the resources out of all these warehouses into this one, and then have them flow out onto the, onto the belts over here. And so, he'd be able to switch it over without waiting for it to get completely empty and have a um, and, and, have, and have a break on, on, on the supply on the belt. Uh, that's what I did on the stations I did earlier. Um, and it seemed to work. And you can then and you can then swing by. So you, you have these ones dump into this into this chest. And then, uh, and this chest dump out onto the belts, and the system will work fine while you're doing that. Because if you get distracted and forget about uh, fixing it, the trains will still st still turn up. They'll unload into these warehouses, which will unload into this one, and it will carry on flowing and working. So it's it's still a two part job, but it doesn't. There's no risk pack point in the middle of it where the system is going to break if you don't if you don't fix the job up properly. Now, granted, around here there are quite a lot of belts because of the fuel belt coming through here and so on. So it's not going to be trivial to do this. But I imagine it's going to be manageable and possible. And, and, and Tristan's good at uh, doing doing stuff from a great distance with the with the uh, navigation satellite. So I'm sure he'd be okay. But yes, he is working on converting all of the stations in the bus area. There's another one that's been done um, over to over to the single stage single warehouse um, system. So it it is a gradual process. But I'm but as I say, I have every confidence that he will get there eventually. He's also, while he's been messing around here, he's been converting the stations over to run on ingots instead of, instead of, um, in, instead of plates. As we've discussed before, it's far more efficient logistically to bring the, the metals as ingots from the stations where they're picked up uh, over, to the, over to the other stations. So you, you can transport them around as plates, but you need to send about five times as many trains. The ingots are much, much denser in the amount of copper you get per train. So, if we're over here, we instead of bringing in a copper and, um, on the train like this and flowing it down here and then, and then, well, it's going underneath this machine here, as you can see, and being passed down here. If instead, he upgrades this to, um, to ship, copper, ship in copper ingots, like he's done here with the steel, those can then come round here, down here, and be fed into this machine, which will then chop them up into steel plates and send them out down this way. So you've still got steel plates on copper plates and iron plates on the bus, so everything will still carry on working down the bus exactly as it did before. We don't need any further changes down here. We're doing the conversion up here in one of these ludicrously fast advanced assembly machines. Uh, but it does mean that you can then bring in copper ingots into the station here. And so he's been doing a sort of a gradual switchover where the, uh, the system is trying very hard to run out of copper and as you can see the plates are being gradually pulled through as the as the systems work on the bus we're pulling through the very last of the copper out of this station here and once that has finally finished there, well there's another alarm here that's now going off that's why we've got a copper sim symbol down here so this tells Tristan that he's now, it's now almost ready for him to come in and, and uh, switch this one over to running on ingots instead now I think before he does that he does need this to pull out pull the copper out all the way to here because you can't feed copper plates into this machine, it needs to, it needs to have pulled all the copper through, and then we can start dumping, and then we can change change the belts here to loaders, and then have an unloading system on the bottom here. Then tell this to start bringing in ingots, and then it'll be done. And so that sh that sh I, I imagine that's going to work without too much difficulty. He's he set this up well. It's very designed for the future, and as soon as it's ready, he can just swap these swap these over, and it'll it'll start working. So that's but yeah, that looks good to me. He has also as, as part of this, however, this is going to upset um, this is going to upset Mike slightly because you'll see this belt that's coming here out out of the uh, steel ingot station is running trundling across here happily, and then it suddenly turns into a steel into a steel plate belt. Uh, so I mean they're both steel. But they're in very, very different form factors. And the point is that uh, when when uh, Mike originally set up his train that goes up to Norbit, he sets it up to pick up steel plate from here, which is inefficient and, uh, and and not what we want to do. So this belt is being gradually switched over to be a steel ingot belt, and then it'll pass steel ingots down here, and those will then be passed into into this train. Tristan says he has set up something to ah uh, oh, yes down here. Here we go. This will be look. What this will be? One of these will be. Yeah, this one's watching the uh, watching the contents of the belt and saying when you see any steel ingots. Oh, I see. It's reading and enable disabling. So it's watching for it's watching for what's on itself. And as soon as it sees any steel ingots, um, it will immediately stop running. That's quite neat. I like I like that design um, because it's it's a single. It works on a single belt. But then there's an emergency backup here. We've got a. Um, uh, it's not doing anything at all. Uh, oh, because you need to. Yes, you can't. You can't set up a circuit condition on a belt without linking it to something else. So this one is working on just literally just itself, but it needs to be linked up to another piece of belt in order to actually um, be able to do anything. In order to be able to set any circuit conditions, that's kind of silly, but it's a it's a convenient workaround. I I, I sort of appreciate that. So that means that when the uh, when when we do when the steel ingots do make it all the way down to here. It is going to briefly break uh, Mike's steel supply that goes up to up to his uh, factory in, for material science, 
but Selavi, uh, let we um, he's going he's going to want to reprogram that then to work off steel ingots anyway. So at that point, we can then just you know upgrade and switch and stuff. My other con slight concern is that there's going to be a load of steel plates in this underground belt, which we'll need to do something about. And we could just put in a, a load of belts across here, rip them all up again, and that will then dump it into the into, back into the system. And I think we've probably got something that will pull steel out of the logistics system and uh, and deal with it properly, as you'll have seen in my um, in my recent uh, how to how to use bots and logistics chests video. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, the next big thing to look at is the red circuits, and I hinted at those yesterday, where I w when I was looking at the um, at the production down here. Spoiler, spoiler alert! We'll come back to that. But making memory cards requires red circuits, and as you can see, there aren't any in here. We've we've had we've had had a, had a big problem with those. So Tristan traced that backwards and followed it over to the massive circuitomatron over here where we're making huge quantities of green circuits and turning a lot of those into huge quantities of red circuits and this is an amazing system it works incredibly quickly this was the, the you'll remember I, t I talked about mark making this a week or two ago um, but there's a problem down here and the problem is that we've run out of electronic components and those are being made where are those being made? I'm, I'm sure they're going to be being made on site. Yes, they are. No, I take it back. Those are not being made on site. They're coming in on these belts from over here, which is coming in from this station. Right. Okay. So now I need to work out where the other end of this of this uh, of this this system is. Okay. Here we go. Electronic components pickup. So that that's part. Is that part of Module City? No, it's not. That's. That's over here in the northern part of the base, uh, so there is a system up here which in theory at least brings in rare metals and other stuff and makes electronic components. So we've got a rank of machines here that should be churning out massive quantities of electronic components. And having just noticed this, notice that we have electronics components being made off bus, this makes me think we should be bringing them in by, to the bus by train, which we're not doing at the moment, I don't think, because I'm pretty sure I remember faffing. I, I remember running a belt from um, uh, for, for them from, from the bus. We'll need to check that, well, I'll check that out in a moment. So, those should be making electronic components, but they're not because we've run out of lithium, and lithium is presumably coming in from another train. Yes, there is a tr there is a pipe coming around here from here. So the lithium should be coming in from here. Let's go off and find the lithium. That's down. I know where that one is. That because I set that one up initially myself. That's down here. We've got a lithium pickup station which has very little lithium in it. It's coming through at an absolute trickle. Now, and I suspect. The, this is going. This is why the problem hasn't been sorted out yet. Um, the lithium is being produced quite slowly. However, um, I think there was also a problem in the production of it. But I think this means we might need to come back to it and re revisit the lithium and significantly increase the, the production rate. But this had failed because, and, uh, and it's now been fixed. But looking at the notes, this had failed because we'd run out of mineral water. You can see it's basically empty. We have approximately no mineral water in here. So that's that's causing problems. And it turns out, it turns out that this was because um, the mineral water train was previously picking up from a station over here that was called, uh, probably called mineral or mineral water pickup or something like that. But when uh, when Mark moved the core processing facility from here up to here and rebuilt it, he, he now renamed it to he, he named all these to prior prio stations because this is high priority. Now with mineral water that had never been necessary because we've never had more than one place for getting mineral water from because we just don't have any real use for it. So we've been generating as much as we ever needed from the core mining and then storing it, occasionally venting it. And now we're pumping it into this into this tank this tank here, uh, just not fast enough because we've been well, we've been venting lots and lots of it off because previously mineral water has always been one of those things that we've had far too much of. So yes, we have we have the vents here to get rid of excess, and apparently we've managed to rip through all of what we had. So that's a bit of a concern. We might need to set up an actual mineral water mine, which is um Incredible. We've not we've not needed mineral water in that sort of quantity, well, ever. But anyway, this is now kind of sorted. So as the mineral water gets produced from the core processing, uh, we will gradually get to gain mineral water in here. We'll come over, grab it. It can go to make the lithium, which can go to make the electronics components, which can go to make the red circuits, which can go to make the uh, memory card substrates, which can go to, uh, memory cards, sorry, uh, which can then go into making all the sciences, and then that should all start running again. This does, however, have the slight problem that I alluded to in yesterday's video, where we now have too much copper uh, to the point where we just turn we are turning copper into landfill. That's crazy. I can't. I, I I'm I'm astonished. Rare metals into landfill. Sure, that's that's normal. Where I'm, I'm used to us having too much uh, rare metal and having to ditch it, but ditching copper that's that's that just feels wrong. 
I, 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 that makes me feel uncomfortable. Like we need to put in more buffers or something like that cause, because it is going to leap at some point in the future. And yes, we've got the uranium problem over here that I talked about yesterday that's sort of gradually building up and hasn't actually become a problem yet because I reverted to an earlier save for this video. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so there's going to, there's going to be problems with the mineral uh, water because well, because we're throwing some of it away, but mostly because the core mining is going to is going to grind to a halt fairly soon. So those are some odd problems to have. However, it does mean, uh, going back to the original problem, it was relatively easy to fix because all that needed to be done was a reprogramming of this 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 the min this mineral water train to tell it to go to no, no not the mineral water the, the mineral water train that stops here to tell it to go to mineral water prior rather than just mineral water pickup. So fixing that then has a knock-on effect where it fixes all the rest of it and so this should start working at some point in the future but we're going to need to keep an eye on that mineral water supply because I'm a little bit worried about it. Meanwhile Mark has been adding to our core mining, he's put in another one over to the east apparently uh, which may well be this one, I, 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 I couldn't really tell you for sure, it could be this one up here, it's, it's hard to say but he's put in an, an, another core mine there which is east and northeast so I'm going to guess that it's probably that one and probably that one but to be honest it doesn't matter, the fact that we know we've got two more core mines in there is great and that's probably a, a part of why we've got quite so many uh, core trains piling up here and chucking through although actually this one hasn't left yet so there's there is there is still we don't have a core mine that's actually full and ready to output some stuff so yeah things are going well we've got two we've got three trains worth of core fragments ready to unload as soon as this one had find somewhere to head off to He's improved the filter cleaning as well. Um, so as you as you probably hopefully remember, we have a crazy crazy belt that runs all the way around the outside of the factory that, in theory, has filters on. Oh, that's the that's the old one. Uh, we have this crazy crazy belt that runs all the way around the outside of the factory here and has um, air, air filters on it. So these can be grabbed by the air purifiers as they need them, and then the dirty ones can be chucked out onto it because it's not a full belt as you can clearly see. Uh, and this works brilliantly. We pass these filters all the way around. It keeps it keeps in, and it keeps everything clean. It keeps all of the pollution inside our base, which is what we want, because then it doesn't upset the biters. Then the biters don't come over to try and eat our walls. Uh, that means we don't have to shoot them, which means we save on... Well, previously we, I'd say we saved on um, am on ammunition and therefore iron and copper and eventually uranium and steel, I suppose, as well, which is sort of iron. Uh, these days it just means we save on electricity because we use um, laser turrets everywhere now because we have, have suitable amounts of electricity. But we don't have all that many laser turrets. We would need to put in an enormous amount more if we were defending against actual proper biter attacks. Uh, as it is, we've got these things, which will which will usually manage to get rid of a um, an ex exploration party who are coming out to try and set up a new nest, but they won't. They, they, there's no way they could defend against a sort of a full-on attack that was, caught, was triggered by pollution. So yes, that means uh, Mark has, as I say, put in a, a an improvement to the, uh, the the filter cleaning, and that's over here, presumably. Nope, that's 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 not it. Is it you? Yes, it's yes, it's you. So we've got here. We've got okay. We've got oh, this is this is the. Uh, all oh, right. This is this is one. This is this is filters being taken off to outposts as required. But I don't think that's really required anymore. And dirty ones being brought back. We've probably got a system. Yeah, these are the ones that these are the new ones that are being made. These are the used ones that are coming back in from around the base, or the ones that have gone all the way around and haven't been needed. And then we're feeding them back out again, and they go onto the onto the system here. And for some, this is interesting. Um, that belt I looked at earlier had clean filters on both sides of it, whereas this one just has them on one side. Maybe that's maybe that's something that's gone a bit strange. Maybe there's um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just part of the building process has has, made, has weirded things a little bit. But anyway, yes, the clean and dirty ones will come back into here. The clean ones will be sent back out again, and the dirty ones get passed through here, where they are being cleaned up by these machines. So the upgrade that's happened here is that um, Marcus, I think he's moved the system over a bit. He's also upgraded it to advanced assembly machines and um, and put in a a, 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 a wide area beacon here to make everything run incredibly quickly. So as you can see, we've now we're now able to rip through all of these dirty filters. In fact, it looks like maybe. Three of two, two maybe three of these machines are actually running. We don't, we don't need all of this at all. But you know, we call it future proofing. Pumping clean water in here, dirty water comes out here, goes through the filter filtration systems, gets cleaned up, and we get small amounts of ore out like this, and then passed up back up again as clean water. And as usual, we've got a, we've got a pump here that will um, that will pump additional clean water in if there's less than twenty five thousand in this tank. So it basically it keeps this tank at twenty five thousand. The water gets pumped around, around, around. It's recycled. It's slightly lossy, which is why we need to add a little bit more in. But basically, you can just keep using the same water again and again. <clears throat> this belt of um, of filters is is probably getting quite ridiculous now because it comes all the way along here to here where it's oh no no then it goes up here 
round here. What goes on here? Oh, okay. Yep, it goes up to up to the uh, up to the core miner because you need to have filtration. You need to have air cleaning by core miners because they're very dirty because they're miners. Then it comes back down here, round all the way up here. Jeez, probably round this mine as well. Yep, it goes up and round this mine. Then across here, up up here. It'll go round this this core miner as well over here. Basically, it goes all the way around the outside, all the way around the outside of the base. There was a bit here where it originally came through the middle. I think this is probably now deprecated, if we find the other end of this belt. Yeah, I don't know where this is deprecated from, but it is certainly deprecated. Uh, okay, that originally came from all the way down here, so previous... Uh, okay, right, pre yes, previously there was another belt that went off from here, went round through all of these purifiers. Hopefully he's going to tidy all this up at some point. But now he's, he's, he looks like he's just started a completely new one that comes all the way over here. Then, as I say, goes round here, round here, round here. Um, I don't even know where I got to. I think it was probably somewhere over here. Uh, we're still pulling in the um, the di yeah the dirty filters that are coming up this belt are still being are still being dropped off onto the onto the new belt. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> onto the yeah onto the new belt here. So we're, we're passing yeah with the dirty filters that are coming through from the old old filtration system are still being passed through because we want to do something with them. Goodness knows what's going on with this belt coming through here. Uh, yeah, pfft. Oh, oh! This is an this is an outpost system, right? So we had an outpost up here that was bringing in bringing in filters by train, passing them round in a loop here, <laughs> and then picking them up with the train again, and that's sort of just going round and round underneath this underneath this one. That's really weird. I feel like we should just link the two together somehow. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe Mark will do that next in, in a future in a future video. But that's that's weird. Uh, anyway, yes, those are which. Which belt was I following? Yes, this one. They're then coming around here. We seem to have, we do seem to have a full belt here, which is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, it'll it'll sort itself out. That, I mean, I'm sure this is probably just just full because because of the building process. And if we follow it back far enough, then we'll find an area where it's um, where where there's gaps on it, probably. Actually, uh, will we? I'm not I'm not sh sure. Yes, we will, because he's, 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 he's using a piece of yellow belt here to make sure this belt is only 50% full, so that's great. Um, anyway, I was following a, 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 a ridiculously, ridiculously long belt. It got, we got to here, and then it comes all the way across here, round the edge of the base, round the, round the free power. There's another mine there that needs to be kept clean. So there is also... Um, is there any outposting going on here? Uh, no, there doesn't seem to be a filter outpost here. So the belt goes round that, down here... <laughs> Around the edge of this lake, down, round, round here, all, all down here, and okay, it doesn't go over to over here. So we've got, we've got presumably some separate, yeah, we've got a separate um, filtration area around that one and around this one. I am honestly surprised that this belt, he, he, that he didn't make the belt go. Oh, he has. <laughs> I was going to say I'm surprised he hasn't made it go around everything. He, ha he has. He split it off to go around over here as well, uh, down here past this mine. Oh, this bit's still under construction, possibly because there aren't uh, robots over there. He's not gone over to these mines. I'm both surprised but also slightly relieved in a sl in a weird way. Uh, round down here, down here, down through the middle through the middle of the base. That seems odd it, that it didn't come down here. Maybe maybe this is a work in progress. But eventually, yeah, it'll come down through the middle of the base. So down here, down here, around the edge of edge of most of the stuff that we're doing. Oh, that's a thought. That means that my fact my um, aero scaffolding area area over here. Is not being cleaned up after. Is, is not being cleaned up after. He's not doing any mining, so it's not too filthy. But assembly machines do still release a certain amount of um, a certain amount of pollution. So actually, yeah, that's 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 my, that's my bad. I should have. I need to tap into the um, into the into the filter belt probably here, and then run it down maybe down the middle of this railway, and then across here, and then link it back in over here. So maybe that's something that I or maybe maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll let Mark do that because he enjoys making really 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 long belts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yes, it comes comes back round here. I'm going to try and hurry up a bit. There's a bit of pollution being generated down here. I'm not quite sure what from because it seems weird that um, in, that uh, splitters would produce pollution. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's coming from the trains and just drifting a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the belt then makes its way all the way round over through here somewhere. I think it probably is going to then loop down through this area. Oh no, no, I take it back. It comes. It's down onto the bottom of here somewhere. Ah, yes, here it comes. It comes down here on the edge of the pollution cloud. That makes sense. Uh, over here, and then comes back all the way up round here to join back into where it where it originally came out. So you can see the belt belt going out there, coming back in here, and then feeding back into the into the system over here. Wow, that was that was a lot. I'll um, I think I'll go back and put in a message and a timestamp or a. Um, a chapter thing on here, just in case anyone doesn't want to watch me scrolling around all of that, because that was rather a lot. 
Um, yeah, so there is, so, yes, he's, he's, uh, so that is, is, is good, um, but it, as I say, it need, needs a bit of expansion, but that, this bit over here is very much my fault. Uh, this bit over here is very much unexpected, but perhaps if we just, yeah, we could, if we bring it down, if we bring the filter belt down the railway lines here, then go across at the bottom of here, and probably under, uh, probably across here and underneath all of this bit, and then maybe maybe round round over here to get and to join on onto here. That'd be quite nice. And we can then add in, a, we can then remove this 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 outpost station over here and have it just feed straight onto the main belt with everything else. The amusing thing about this is that we have we've now come up with the, the concept of a mark belt, and even Mark is describing it as that. So this this is apparently now a mark belt is a is a belt where. It's where you put in a ludicrously long belt that sort of tests the limit of sanity, where a a, a normal person in very heavy inverted commas there, because um, we're no, I don't think any of us are tr truly normal about this, but where 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 someone like me would probably put in a railway system, uh, this is where. Mark would come in and just use belts for the entire thing. So out on Big Rid, you can see we've got we've got core miner over here that is then carrying all the stuff. In. Well, actually, that, no, we've got we've got core miners up here. Up here, that's running all of, that's running all the core fragments in by a belt that comes all the way down here to get to the core processing down here. Uh, that y you can see why we sort of named them after him because that is an astonishingly long belt. I mean, I can it's sort of it's sort of understandable on an outpost planet like this because it, this planet doesn't have a train network. So I can see the the slight advantage of not having to go out and set up a full train network on this planet. But he also does it sometimes on Norvis where you'll 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 find a. Uh, a ridiculously long belt, or in Norbit, I know where I know where there is one. In Norbit, to do the biological science, you require this this stuff: the process vitamolange, vitamolange extract. And he's bringing that in with rocket by rocket, which is a little bit naughty in the first place. But to be on to be fair, at this point, we didn't have a great deal of choice because we don't have spaceships, and and you can't send this stuff around by delivery cannon. So it's a choice between either shipping the. Um, the Vitamelange Spice, or sort of Vitamelange Roast, whichever one it is, uh, oh, this one, no, not that one, over, the other one, anyway, the previous one to it, over by Delivery Cannon, and then processing it in space, or shipping it over by Rocket, and he, he went for the Rocket one, and I, I, I can't really, I can't really blame him for that, I, I think the amount of it you get through, I think that's probably a sensible thing, because it can be a productivity module at the other end. He then, however, needs need he needs it for making the making the science over here. That's fine. I mean, this 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 is this is sensible. This isn't this isn't a mark belt. This is a, this is a main bus. That's fine. The mark belt is this one that takes the um, whatever these things are, the bio bio scrubbers and the vitamin orange extract, and takes them from here all the way down the middle of the um, the railway system in the space station, and then up here, <laughs> all the way up here, and into the science area up here. That is what I would call a mark belt because it's one that where you go. I mean, come on, mate. We, we, we've got a train system up here. <laughs> this is just this is just ridiculous. <laughs> oh dear. I'm sure in the future we'll we'll sort something out with this and, and it'll be a little bit more sensible. But at the moment, this is that that's quite that's quite a lot. <laughs> we do have another. We have another belt running along here. This this one is carrying batteries for trains and and this one feels. A bit more sensible because it does actually branch out into every single area along here. It's, I mean, we could we could have a trains bringing out the batteries for the trains in a sort of slightly recursive way, but in this case, I think the belt kind of makes sense. But this one is just, yeah, you, you can see why we've named the concept after him. And this conveniently brings me up to uh, Norvis, which is where I'm going to talk about the uh, the next thing that Mark has been doing. And this is the thing I was saying with spoilers earlier. So down here, he has redesigned my uh, memory card production facility, uh, essentially to bring it up to fully fully speed module, fully beaconed. It's now going to be running much much faster with far fewer machines. Great. Um, so because memory cards have always been a bit of a bit of a problem for us, sometimes we just about have enough, but it's always sort of it's always trying to sort of just scrape it along and try and just desperately keep enough of them available. Um, so this facility is going to be able to he's going to be capable of making far more of them. I think it produces a complete belt on the output. The problem is on the input side we have or we had a rip previously we had one belt coming out bringing the substrates, one belt coming out bringing the uh, bringing the red circuits. They were coming down these two belts in the middle here. Um, and going going in here and being being made into the into the in, into the uh, into the memory cards, and so the limiting factor was those two belts, and to be honest, also the fact the rate we're bringing the uh, stuff up by rocket. So because we're now going to be bringing it up by train, and hopefully get a bit more throughput going, a bit more of everything. He's built up this much larger system, and since I went in and pointed out that actually we didn't have remotely enough throughput because he was going to still be limited by the belts, he's now come in and he's put in some extra belts. So this is now going to work very nicely. There's a belt that's the wrong way around there. Um, that should be like that. 
Um, but in, in order to do that, he's had to move a few of these machines across a little bit, but that's that's not difficult. The uh, the way they're built, there's plenty of room over here. I think it's just a case of pick, you pick up the machine on the right and put another machine in on the left and then don't power it because there aren't enough pylons in there. So there's a couple, a couple of minor problems in there, but to be honest, we have enough thermofluid now. Thermofluid is one of those things where you need an enormous quantity of it early on when you're trying to fill up the buffers. So you're going, oh my god, so much thermofluid grip production, I can't, I can't keep up. How are we going to keep up with this? And then you fill the buffers up and then it's, well, everything goes to sleep because all the buffers are full and it mostly gets recycled, so it's fine. The memory cards are a little bit like that as well, except they get, we do eat up a lot more of those each time we expand. But if we just, if we just sat there doing a level of research, we would find that most of the memory cards would come back. We'd probably get I don't know, I'm going, to, I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark and guess it's 75-80%, something like that, of the memory cards come back and get recycled. So, you, you need, yes, you need to re replace the 25% that get used up, either de whether they're destroyed or they become part of the science pack and then get eaten by the, uh, by the uh, labs. But some of them, at least, will, uh, will a lot of them will come round, back, back round again. The problem is, when you make a new type of science, suddenly you need about 8,000 memory cards to go in and fill up the buffer in the warehouse of the new, with the new catalogues. And then you need, and then you'll have another buffer at the other end, which is perhaps another eight thousand uh, um, uh, memory cards in, in in the form of catalogs. So suddenly you need about sixteen thousand of them each time you make a new type of science, and that that that's where the problem comes from. And that's why you, every so often you just go, oh no, we don't have any memory cards, and we look in here, and then we see there's only seventeen hundred in each one of these boxes, and that's because of the red circuit problem I mentioned earlier. So once we get red circuits flowing nicely again, this system is going to run really, really quickly, and we're going to have an, we're going to have an embarrassment of memory cards. We're going to have so many we won't know what to do with them all. Um, however, I suspect that's going to be uh, behind quite a lot more more expansion in the future, just to get everything running properly. I did mention as I was when I was talking about this this production system up here that it's, it's been made better because we now have a train delivering stuff instead of a rocket. So yes, the rocket has, has been removed from here. I think I talked about this yesterday actually. I don't know why it's on my list twice, but yeah, we now have we have probably because I was talking about the space elevator. We will now have a train that comes in here and drops off all the all the all the stuff that's needed up here. We are going to need to add in extra extra fluid trains to bring up the stuff that's currently being brought up in barrels. But we've got a we've got a good supply of heavy oil. The petroleum gas can be made from the heavy oil if we're desperate over here, um, and the lube. Well, we've, we, we we don't seem to have run out of lube yet, so we, we're 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 basically okay with all these resources, I think. Um, we, we'll we'll need to take a bit of a look at this, but we can swap all, we can we can swap over all these stations to be fluid stations to bring up the well the the the, uh, the light oil, the heavy oil, and and the lube. Make, we'll we'll check exactly what we need. Uh, and unload these here, pipe them around, etc., etc. Because we're not going to need these anymore because we're we're not producing the metals and and, and so forth. And we're just shipping and we're shipping all the ore because we're shipping all the ores down to Norvis. Finally, up in Norbit, uh, I've I, I came over here and I noticed that we were very very short of um, production science. You, uh, that's utility, that's production, I'm pretty sure that's the right way around. Um, and it turned out that we were we were very, very short of plasma for it. So I put in more plasma machines up here. So I'm generating the plasma a lot faster. I talked about this last week, but now, now I, have, I have actually done it. So we put in a lot more machines to make the plasma faster, and I've speed moduled them all to make them make lots and lots more plasma. So that is now full. These have now stopped because we've run out of iron ingots. I don't know why we've run out of iron ingots. I think things are a bit broken down on the other end. But since we're switching over to the, the, the new, better train-based system rather than the rocket system, I think I would like to... Up Upgrade. I would like to fix it for the train system rather than fixing it for the rocket system and then fixing it again for the train system. Just you know, I don't want to double handle it. I'd like, I'd, I'd rather make the fix once rather than rather than do it twice. So at the moment, not too worried about it, but it is going to at some point going to cause problems with our research. Um, it did. It has worked quite nicely now. We, 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 though, when we do have all of the ingredients available, this should be more. This should be more than fast enough to keep up. To be honest, I think the one machine would have been fast enough to keep up. It was. It was the plasma that was the, the real problem there. And interestingly, that is a thing that uses lithium. So this is going to be another lithium sink on the on our on our system. Next up, over here on Snowdrop, uh, we see that Tristan has done some expansion and improvement of the um, of, of the uh, cryonite production systems. So, uh, as well as fixing up the minor things that I talked about yesterday and getting all of these these machines down here working. He's also dealt with the, the iron problem that was coming through here, linking, basically linked up all of the uh, delivery cannons, including one right down at the bottom here that's getting rid of any spare uh, core fragments. Now, hopefully, we won't be using this system for enormously longer because we're going to be switching over to spaceships rather than delivery cannons, as, as, as we've discussed. Um, but it's important to keep it up and running in the meantime while we're sort of while we're working towards having uh, ha having the um, the resources that we, we want coming in the way we want them. I think in the future he's going to need some more, a better supply of cryonite coming in here, because as we can see over here, it's yeah, it is going getting to all of the all of the uh, delivery cannons, but it's not building up any sort of backlog. It is clearly being used up as fast as it can possibly be produced. 
So the next thing to talk about is research. We have done we have done some research. Uh, we've done a mining productivity six, which is nice. That means we, we we each time each time a mining happens, we get a little bit more resource from it. I, I talked about this last week. I won't I won't I won't go through it again in detail. But we've got that. So we've got that up to another level. We did Astro three science packs which is this one up here. Um, and that means that we, we, we tend to wait to do these. We don't do these as soon as we can. We'll leave them to do them. Do them once the catalogs are re actually ready. Because that means, what, what, because uh, then that way, when you, when you, do, when you un unlock a new science pack, suddenly you get loads and loads of new researchers available up here. And so it's nice if you keep these ones as the, one, as the ones that we're actually able to do at the moment, rather than the ones that uh, we potentially could do, except we haven't finished that science pack yet. Uh, we've done unit capsules, um, apparently. I Probably just because we're short of things to research. So the unit capsules are things that allow you to deploy biters. I have no idea where those are in here. I'm, uh, we'll find these ones. So it's a smaller version of these. These allow you to throw a capsule and boom, a biter appears that's on your side. So in theory, you could carry sort of... If you get these up to the massive, massive biters, you could then go into a combat area with sort of... 50 of them, throw them all on the floor, and a load of biters would swarm out to uh, to protect you and, and, and attack the enemy. These could be actually be quite useful for clearing out the pyramids, because maybe you could go and chuck a load, maybe chuck a nuke, chuck a load of these, and then run away, and they'd all and the, and the biters would tidy up in, in there for you. I don't, I don't know. I think that could be worth investigating. We've done life support two, which is a more advanced um, life support equipment that you can put into your uh, into into your pack. Um, it increases the efficiency of it, which is quite nice. So if I put that into my spacesuit, then I'll get through a lot fewer uh, life support cans in uh, keeping me alive. So yeah, sure, could be nice. We've researched the compact beacon. Now these things are interesting. They are they're like they're like beacons, but they're smaller. You know, as the name suggests. The interesting part is that they effectively they are only they only affect machines that are within two tiles of them. So basically, you can only realistically use them for a very very small number of machines. But they have a 75% transmission efficiency instead of a 50% transmission efficiency. So for something like the uh, the science labs, we could put in one of those somewhere around, if we, if we design them with them in mind, we could, we could put in a compact beacon in here, like this, and it would be able to affect both of those, um, and then we could fill that up with, with the modules like this, and it would have, a, and it would speed these up a significant, it, it would mean your modules would get significantly more bang for the number of modules you put in there. So, if you're using tier 9 modules, for example, or something like that, which are incredibly expensive, putting them in here would mean that you'd be able, putting them in a com compact module would mean you get 75% of the effectiveness from them instead of 50%, and so it sort of it makes them a bit nicer to it makes it means you get more more speed for, for your modules and so if you're using something really expensive that's great we've researched holmium accumulators which are just better accumulators but um, so that's going to be useful for spaceships in the future biological three catalogs have been researched because mark is apparently uh, closing in on that part of bio but as you can see we've not done the bioscience pack even though we could because we're not ready we, we're not ready to have all of these all the extra or a load more things turn from red into yellow um, because it just makes it cluttered and harder to see what we want to do next we've got the supercharger now these things are interesting these are devices that can charge 64 robots at a time and these are useful when you have a massive bot frenzy going on like this. Because as you can see, we've got a huge cloud of bots trying to fly across the uh, across the factory to go and demolish a large chunk of, well, factory up here. And a lot of them are having trouble with, the, with their batteries because bots don't act, can't actually fly all that far before they need to recharge. So the, and a roboport can only charge up four bots at once and it takes a relatively long time to do it. So you get these massive queues of bots floating around the uh, around the rover port. And what's worse is often because they've been floating there for so long, their batteries go flat and then they move incredibly slowly as they creep over to then get onto the rover port to charge up again. If you've got a supercharger, then you can charge 64 bots at a time at high speed. So you'll be able to rip through all of these bots that are sitting there waiting to charge and just get them get them charged up and ready to head off very very quickly. So if we stick a few of if we scatter a few of these on the sort of the major bot corridors throughout the uh, throughout the factory, both on on the ground and probably up in space as well, then it can it can mean the bots will just be so much more mobile because they'll be able to charge up more quickly. We've researched the construction pylon. Essentially, it's a system that allows you to connect out your um, your RoboPort network and your power network over long distances very, very quickly and easily. Um, and it says it also has a 64 by 64 construction area. So, yeah, you can you can extend out your, your RoboPort coverage area very, very quickly. Now, these can't charge up robots, so that if you combine these and the supercharger, you get quite a lot of what the RoboPort can do. So you've got these ones providing the... Um, 
providing, okay, they provide power, but they also provide construction area coverage. The supercharger will charge up the robots, uh, but then you still need the robot ports for them to live in, but you can have, but for sort of sending them out over long distances and, and to spread them out, spread out your robot port over a wide area, you can use these together and, they'll, and that'll allow you to, uh, and that allows you to just quickly expand your robot port network. Now, we already have, kind of already have expanded our robot port network to a ridiculous degree with uh, robot ports, but we may want to go in and do some upgrades or we'll use these next time when we want to, uh, when we want to expand it out further. We've researched the portable RTG2. So this is another generator that you, you can put into your, um, into your armor to produce power. And this is the Mark II version of it. So this produces 1.2 megawatts, whereas the previous one, the one that we're presumably all using at the moment, produces 800 kilowatts. So it's 50% better. It's an extra, it's an extra chunk of power for, uh, for it to go, to go in your armor. Um, and at the moment, at the moment, yeah. Oh, oh no! Actually, at the moment, I'm using small portable generators. That's ridiculous. So these ones, these ones actually burn fuel. I should, and they only produce 200 kilowatts each. I should get rid of. I should upgrade to a better thruster suit. I should upgrade some. I should get rid of the portable generators and put in an RTG. That'd be much nicer. Um, but at the moment, the RTGs are quite big. They're sort of they're at four by four, so it would take up all of this space. So that's probably why I haven't yet. But I think there's, hopefully there's better thruster suits available as well. In fact. Yes, the very next thing on the list is Thruster Suit 2. So down here, we've gone gone from Thruster Suit 1, which has a equipment grid of 6x6 and no resistances, almost no resistances at all. Thruster Suit 2, which has a grid of 8x8. So that will give me that bit of extra space. So I think I would, at this point, I would be able to sensibly upgrade to the RTG 2. Um, and it still doesn't seem to give you any armor. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's not one for going into combat with. But then I think I already knew that. We've got personal battery too as well, so that's going to allow you to store a bit more power in your in your suit equipment a bit more easily. But if you've got the RTG2, you might not you might not even need it because the uh, amount of power that stuff is going to use your, your your generator might be able to keep up with it. We'll see. But maybe actually no. If you're going in, if you're going into combat with lots of personal defense lasers, then you might need to have um, ha need to have some battery because your your power usage is going to spike a lot more. So you run into a biter area, it'll spike the power usage will spike up while you kill everything, and then it'll drop back down again so you can recharge the batteries. We've researched energy shield too, so this is another thing you can put in your armor. So you get 250 points of armor there, and it uh, and it recharges at 100 per second. That's well, that's, that's quite impressive. I think that would be that would be very worth having if you're going in and doing any combat. Although, as, a, as far as I remember, I think these aren't very compatible with jetpacks. So I think if you if you use it, as far, I have a feeling, and I'd need to check this to be sure, but I have a feeling that if you use a jetpack, then it damages your your uh, your shield. However, if you use the ablative armor, uh, let's see if we can find that. These ones, adaptive armor, sorry, not ablative. Then these ones, um, they, they 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 use less power. They regenerate more slowly, and I think they don't clash with uh, jetpacks. I could be completely wrong about the jetpack thing. We'll we'll find out later. We've researched aero bulkheads. These are an intermediate. They go into making lots of the spaceship stuff. And speaking of spaceships, we have researched spaceships. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, but we now finally have spaceships. This is why I've been pushing for Astro Three quite so hard for. A, for, for, well, for, for quite a long time and just not really getting there for all kinds of reasons. But we've now got spaceships and, the, and spaceships are amazing. So we're going to be using these in the next few episodes. What we, once we, we're going to be trying to put together a system for building them and then we'll start, start using them a lot more heavily. We've noticed that, or Tristan's noticed, that we can also do Spaceship Integrity 1, 2, 3, 4 and, and apparently 5, although that's not queued up. Uh, and we've, we haven't got those... We, we, and we thought we might as well just queue those up straight away. And, and, and the space, because we've got all the different science packs they require. So this one, for example, requires Material 1, which Mike did ages ago. This one requires Material 2, which Mike did ages ago. This one requires Material 3, which Mike did a little while ago. This one requires Material 3 and Energy 1, that Tristan did ages ago. So as you can see, we've got We've got all the science packs that we need to do all of these, and this one, oh, this one is energy too. So we've got all the science packs we need to get the, get our um, our spaceship integrity up by another. Uh, so it's from probably at 100 at the moment, 200, 300, 400, probably up to about 500, 600, which is going to make making our first spaceships much easier because we'll be able to make them quite a lot bigger almost immediately and not have to worry about the stress stresses and strains and size and all that sort of thing. So this, so having having all of these done basically immediately and certainly before we we're really going to start building spaceships is going to be so useful. The next thing that's been done has been the biological two upgrades. That's these ones across here that gets you things like agility, which makes you makes you run faster, your constitution, which gives you more health, dexterity, which allows you to mine things quicker, intelligence, which allows research to run faster, and strength, which allows you to carry more. So these are all very very useful. Uh, we grabbed those because they, these are all based on bio two. And so since we've got bio two, while we're waiting for the astro three to be finished, I think we'd whack those ones through very very quickly just because they they're great ones to have. 
We've increased bot cargo as well. That's bot speed. There's bot cargo in there somewhere. I, I, I can't bother to find that one. Oh, here it is. Um, that increases the amount the amount that the robots can carry. Um, that's great. They can keep there. It means you need fewer bots to carry stuff out. I don't know whether it applies so much to construction bots. Uh, it's uh, actually I think it does if they're deconstructing something. If they have to empty a chest or something like that, and where they need to pick up loads and loads of stuff. But if they're putting down large areas of scaffolding or landfill, I'm not sure whether it does. They do seem to drop four pieces of scaffolding at a time when they're building at the moment. So maybe maybe this actually has affected that. Uh, we've got braking force 6 on the train, so the trains now slow down a little bit more quickly, which is great. I mean, it means they, it means the trains can go faster for longer, and they can start braking when they're closer to the stations, which in theory increases throughput, and most importantly means they're not, there's less chance of the trains braking when they're still on the main line, slowing down another train that's trying to come through that way as well. Um, I believe spa uh, spaceship clamps are apparently were apparently in progress. I think those are finished probably during the during while I've been recording the video. Spaceship clamps are down here. These are the things that allow you to automate where your spaceship land. So they're 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 vital for spaceship automation, but not vital for, for flying spaceships around manually. So yeah, we're going to need those. I'm glad we've got them, um, but they are we're not going to be using them for a little while. And then we've got ion engines um, it being produced as being being researched as well. Ion engines fantastic because they uh, they, they they they're much much more efficient and they don't use rocket fuel. So, well, I say much more efficient. They use enormous amounts of electricity, but they don't use any rocket. They use very, very little fuel. They use um, ion stream, which is relatively easy to produce and is just mostly energy again. Um, and energy is very, very cheap in space exploration once you get up to space because you can just spam solar power everywhere. So rather than using rocket fuel, which costs oil and enormous amounts of processing, where well, it doesn't necessarily, well, there are lots of recipes for it, but it can cost oil or or just huge areas of, plant, of, of factory. factory. Um, instead, we're going to go for ion engines just basically from the start. I... I was honestly quite surprised when I realised we were researching this because I assumed that ion engines were going to be relatively, not not late game necessarily, but quite a lot later than spaceships because I'm sure in my last run I used uh, rocket rocket engines for quite a while before I developed ion engines. Now it could be that the researchers have been shifted around a little bit and it's been decided that to be, be nice and benevolent and give us ion engines sooner because I think we're just we're just not going to use rocket engines now because the two times you need them is, is when if you, if you haven't got ion engines you need them to fly around obviously. And and if you haven't got, um, and if you want your, your spaceship to land on planets, then you need uh, rocket booster tanks in order to take off again. Because ion booster tanks can only take off from space because ion engines don't produce real significant amounts of thrust in, in real life. Anyway, uh, yeah, they produce quite a lot in this game, but they don't produce enough to lift off from a planet. But my point is that if we have ion engines for travelling around in space, and then space elevators for bringing resources from the planet up into space, then all of a sudden the rocket engines are completely unnecessary. So we're just going to skip them out, skip them completely, I suspect, and just go straight in for ion engines, which is interesting. I've never, never done that, I've never been able to do that before. And so that's the that's the research. Finally, the last thing to talk about here is the is the number of deaths we had during the stream. And of course, because uh, because we've been carrying on with stuff up in space, nobody died this time. We, 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 we've not been we've not been trying to expand factories into into the factory into the biter areas. And apparently, nobody's been clumsy enough to run out of life support or anything like that. So we've had no deaths. However. Um, Mike has, um, wasn't, it wasn't in, in the stream because um, he was off busy having a baby, or at least um, being involved with a baby being had. Um, I think he might be trying to claim this as a negative one death, but it wasn't him, so I don't think we're going to count it. We will congratulate him any, uh, anyway, though, so uh, congratulations to, to, uh, to Mike and Mrs. Mike for, um, for producing another child. <laughs> well done there. And that, on that happy note, that brings us to the end of the video. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to come back on Monday for the stream. We'll be streaming at 7.30pm UK time, as usual, and carrying on with all of the things I've been talking about here. Uh, there's lots to be getting on with. There'll be videos coming out on Tuesday, of course, depend and what, which one you'll see depends on whether you're a supporter or not, because, because of course, supporters get to see videos a week early to say thank you. Uh, then on Wednesday, there'll be an XCOM stream. Things are going quite well at the moment. Uh, we didn't lose anybody in the last stream, uh, although lots of, everyone whose name began with P got injured, which is um, an interesting coincidence. Uh, and, and not deliberate at all, I promise, and especially as I wasn't expecting Pete to fall off that lamppost. Uh, so come along then if, you, if you'd like to, uh, if, uh, for a good fun XCOM stream. If you'd like to submit a soldier to join the, uh, join the ranks, then uh, please do so. Search for the Join the Resistance video and you'll uh, find the instructions on how to, on how to do that. Then uh, Friday and Saturday will be these catch-up streams as usual next week and uh, that brings us all the way back around the week. So again, thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time and goodbye.